system. The human design system is a synthesis of global information, of global systems both ancient and modern. And through this synthesis, we have an accurate way of detailing the nature of what you are as a mechanism. In other words, the basic mechanics of how you function in the Maya. In other words, the human design system is a way to know yourself. It's a way to accurately know who you are. The only thing that you can ever tell the public about the human design system is come and find out what it's about. Uh, what is the human design system? Over the Oracle of Delphi, it said, know thyself. That's what the human design system makes possible. A logical, absolutely logical, empirical method of being able to see who you are in a way that is graphic, in a way that is accurate, and in a way in which anyone, anyone can have access to. So it's a system for self-knowledge. Exactly. Self-masterhood is what I like to call it, because I'm tired of all these bloody masters. Okay, but it helps people to understand why they are, how they are. Well, the first, the first thing for all human beings is to know who they are. One of the things that we see in design is that human beings live out their conditioning and they don't live out who they actually are. And that they never really get an opportunity in their lives to live out who they actually are because they keep on reinforcing their conditioning all of their life. Okay. Are you saying that with your system, a person it's not understands mine. It's not with mine. the system that you teach, that people understand what behavior they have developed? They understand why they are the way they are. And they understand why they haven't been what they thought they should be. And they understand why they are with the people that they're with. The beauty of design is its graphics. Uh, you'll show illustrations. The beauty of yes. design is its graphics. The thing about the human body graph is that everybody has a body graph and everybody has a circuitry. And anyone can really understand the nature of this circuitry. One of the joys of my work is that I teach it to people in their 70s and 80s and I teach it to children. Anybody can learn it. So your system consists it's of not mine. nine, the human design system consists of a system whereby nine chakras are connected by circuits? Yeah, but wait a second now. The, the, the whole thing to understand about the nature of the 20th century is that the 20th century is rooted in what we call synthesis. And anybody who really understands the nature of synthesis recognizes that synthesis changes the nature of the components that make it. The great law of mathematics, the whole is always greater than the sum of the parts. The human design system involves many ancient sciences in a synthetic form. There is uh, the I Ching, there is the chakra system, there is the Zohar Kabbalist tradition, there is astrology, there is physics, there is biology. All of these things are synthesized together in the human design system. It is not any of its parts, like the mystery of the Sphinx. The Sphinx isn't any of its parts. It's more than the sum of its parts. The human design system can really be understood through the body graph because the body graph is the synthesis. Through that body graph, analysis at a level that's so profound is possible. And as I said, transferable. Ordinary people can understand it. Yeah, ordinary people, you know, my, the process that I have been through with the people that have been close to me in this, in this over the last nine years, one of the things that we've discovered is that the human design system without deep financial resources on our part. The human design system has traveled all over the world. And it's traveled all over the world and it's penetrated all over the world simply because it works. It works. People usually take the first step that they have based upon their date of birth, a body graph and a schematics drawn by the computer. And then you or someone else explains to them what this means in practical life. They get a reading, and this is important to understand because it's not an interpretation. That is, uh, we've trained hundreds of analysts. We've trained over 24 teachers that operate in the world now. And one of the keys to design, one of the analysts we trained had a wonderful thing he used to say. He was an astrologer for many years. And his favorite line at the end of an astrological session was he used to t tell his clients, by the way, you can go to another astrologer and get a totally different opinion. And uh, his joy in design was that he realizes that he can't say that anymore. You can go to another design analyst and you will get exactly the same reading because the information is read. It's all written down. It's all written down. That's the beauty of this information. So there's no much room for interpretation based on the body graph? No, no. The only, thing that's, the only interpretation that actually takes place and what analysts are trained to do is to explain how the energy moves in the body graph. But the actual database, our genetic information, is simply something that's read.
This is the beauty of design. You know, the beauty is that you get very, very clean information that is not being controlled or manipulated by somebody who's offering you that information. It's a reading. It's not a mystical experience. It's a reading, and it's a reading literally of your genetic code. Okay. A person that has had a re reading, uh, how do they feel that? Is that like a revelation to them? Yes and no. I've, I've done, I've sat with over 4,000 people now, so I've sat with a lot of people. The ones that I enjoy the most are the ones that at the end of the reading they laugh. And, they, and what they typically say is, I always knew that was me, but now I know for sure. That's very gratifying for me. These are people that are deeply aware in their own way, but don't have, the, don't have a tool that has allowed them to be able to relax. See, look, we have this thing about the nature of the mind. Until you know what you need to know, the mind never lets go of you. And this is the biggest dilemma for human beings. In my work, the greatest disease in the world is self-hatred. I see it everywhere. And no matter what knowledge human beings seem to get on the road, on the spiritual road, they still seem to have this sense that they don't know what they need to know. The human design system provides you with very, very concrete information about the nature of what it is that you need to know. Now, I'm not a preacher, and I'm not a believer, and uh, I'm very pragmatic about the nature of what happens between the relationship of the human design system with people who come to it. Most people come to this knowledge because they're ill. They come to this knowledge because they have problems and that they're deeply unhappy. They come to this knowledge because that's what they do in life. They seek out spiritual stuff. Most of the people that I deal with are, are simply people that are in trouble. The human design system, because it's new and because it's untested in that sense, because it's new, the only people who come are the ones who are desperate. So for them, the experience is one in which they end up leaving their therapies, they end up starting a process of discovering themselves. It's very rewarding at that level. But it's not yet at a point where it's, it is something that is attracting healthy people. This is one of my jokes. Eh? The human design system is, is healing people who have the deepest self-hatred right now. And what does it tell them? Does it tell them why they have this self well, it, No, it just tells them that it's not their fault, after all. I mean, I'm not a moralist. Either is the human design system. Nobody's to blame for what they are. And most human beings have suffered great indignities in their life through the effects of conditioning that they're totally unaware of. What design really shows people in a simple way, whether you're a child or an adult, is to simply be able to point out and say, look, you can either trust your emotions or not. And if you can't trust those emotions, then be aware that every time you're emotional, you can see who and what is affecting you emotionally, because it's coming from outside, it's coming from somebody else. We can show people what awareness to trust. If you can't trust your mind, don't trust it. It's going to get you into a lot of trouble. You know, if you can trust your instinct, trust it. So what we show people is what is reliable within their nature and where they are vulnerable. Now, that's a great value to people. It's an enormous value to human beings. The How does it typically change their lives? <laughs> uh, that's cute. Uh, you know, life changes, nobody changes their life. What happens to them is that uh, they have a, a, a window of awareness that's available to them. Uh, there, there is nothing in this life but what some people call luck. Of the thousands of people that I've worked with, there are some people who grasp it deeply and who are moved by it and find a way to incorporate that into a whole new way of being. But, you know, one of the things that I don't do and I'm very clear about is that the human design system offers no promise of anything. We're not selling a promise here. It's not the enlightenment road. You know, this is not, uh, say, 25 mantras, everything's going to be okay. This is a very cold, clear, logical, analytical way in which a human being can see themselves and begin whatever their own unique process is to come out of that. The one thing I do know, seven years. It takes seven years seven years of working with it to be able to be free of the conditioning. One of the major things that I learned from it was that how I am affected by other people, other relationships with people. Sure. It's one of the most important aspects. You see, I'm, a, I'm an Aries with double rat. I'm here to plant seeds. I will never see in my lifetime even the beginning of this tree or any of its fruit. It's a long ways away. This is new knowledge, and it's a profound revelation that came into the world that really is for real. What it does for human beings is for real. But it's going to take a very, very long time for that to flower. You see, everything that I represent goes against the standards that are accepted in our society. 
that there is such a thing as free will, that there is moral redemption, that there are all these things that simply have nothing to do with what I know is the reality of our maya, if I can put those two juxtaposed together. With maya you mean the illusion we live in? Yes, the illusion we live in, which is very beautiful. Eh? It's warm, it's nice, we all like it, eh? but nonetheless it's an illusion and the assumption that we are in control of our lives, this is one of the most painful aspects of the illusion. I deal with nothing but expectation in this life. Human beings are just into it. You often say, no choice. Yes. I wear it <laughs> on, my, on my chest inside here. <laughs> it is your shirt, your t-shirt, your yeah. No choice. No choice. How does that relate to what you said, there is no free will? Okay, let me, let me put it in a way that perhaps is, is easier to understand. If you're all alone, if you're totally all alone, I mean truly all alone, the only thing that you can know, what Nisa Gadada knew, is that you can know I am. That's truly all you can know if you're alone. You can know I am. And uh, if you're all alone and suddenly there's light around you and you can see the shapes of things, there's a possibility of being able to say, I know I am here now. That's all very possible. There's no maya in any of that. This is the spontaneous existential reality. I am here now. But the moment that you meet another, the moment that you meet another, in that moment something enters in and it's called the maya. Because you see, we're here to explain things to each other. This is one of our jokes. And in order to explain things to each other, we need to have words. And the moment we have words, we have reasons. So I say, I am here now, and you say, why? And I say, because. And I say, because of this and because of that. Now, that's the maya. And now, that's th when you say mutual projections and games happen. They just happen. Everything happens. Life, life happens. And your or the human design system that helps you to dissect the maya, the illusion, the games, That's the what it's for. exchanges from what might be the underlying reality. It is the mechanics of the maya. Uh, this year I was lucky enough to have a couple of books come through me and one of them is called Rave Anatomy, The Mechanics of the Maya and it's simply a mapping, a mapping of the maya. The body graph, the human design body graph, the rave body graph is, a, is an international symbol that one day will act as a language. I have students from all over the world and we can all stand together and look at a body graph on a wall and we can all speak that language without ever having to say a word to each other. We all have a common language to work with. That's the future. You see, human beings are going to ultimately have to find the best way to organize each other and come together. In the work that I do with corporations, one of the most fantastic things is you can really see how you can maximize potential at any level simply by bringing the right people together. This is one of the most valuable tools of design, is to really see the nature of human compatibility. And at a level that's very profound. You mean you could help make teams work better? Oh, much better. Or you could people that function One day the planet will function better that way. Hopefully. Not hopefully, it will. People that function in a specific way, you could analyze what they, let their me shortcomings are. Let me give you an example. Let's say that you have three people that are working in, a, in an office space in a corporation. They have exactly the same job. They get exactly the same salary. There is no functional difference between them. Okay. And one of them has a defined channel. What I mean by defined is within their circuitry, something that's always operating. And that channel happens to be the channel of leadership, the design of an alpha. So by their very nature, they need to exert their influence. It's not their fault. It's not like there's something wrong with them. It's not like they want to be the boss or they have to be the boss. They just happen to be the boss. So here are these three people in this office working together, doing the same job for the same money, but one of them is always pushing around the others. One of them is always trying to be the leader. One of them is always trying to be the boss. Now that's going to generate problems. Now, by looking at that situation, we can see that that person belongs in a position where they can exert that energy naturally, in which the response to that energy is correct. In other words, they need to be in a position of authority, not to be in the same place with people doing the same job where they end up being the enemy. It's a simple thing. But in this way, you can organize organizations so that everybody really gets along with the people that they're working with. It's one of the keys. In, in more specific things, you, have a relation, you are in a relationship with a certain person and there is always this fight going on, this nagging. Are there ways to overcome that? 
yes and no. Yes and no. It's like anything else. Everything is about awareness. If you're unaware, nothing's possible. Ignorance is the great evil of the world. If you're aware, anything is possible. Now, with this specific situation... Well, for example, there are people that have a channel which is called the channel of judgment. It's a channel of insatiability. They're never satisfied. And these are people that have a deep critical potential. Now, we need them, but they bitch all the time. So if you have somebody like that working with you, there's two things to recognize. One is that their ability to recognize what needs correction in the moment is accurate. But at the same time, it's a pain in the neck. So you have to value that out. Is the information more valuable than the frustration of having to deal with them? You cannot change them. You see, this is the beauty about design. I'm an individual. I know that I cannot survive in the world unless I accept everybody else. But you can at least come to the point to say, it is not because you are bad or you are... Exactly. In other words... because you are who you are. That worker can see that's the kind of person they are. It's not personal. They're not bitching about me. That's just their mechanism. That's what they do. So in, in one of my jokes with people when they come for an analysis is that I always tell them I have a magic pill for them. They get very excited. They, they really think I'm going to give them something mystical. I tell them to go sit in a public place where they can be private. You see, mechanics is all about circuitry, and circuitry can be taken advantage of. If you're somebody that needs to be hooked up, you can go into a public place and hook all that up. So this is a paradox. You say for people to be able to make sound decisions about private matters, yes. it's sometimes good to go in a place where there is a lot of energy. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. And what you're basically saying is that the energy of other people helped them to be whole, sure. to be complete and thereby make a better judgment. For example, you have a couple, and the couple and they're designed together, they don't activate the throat center, and the throat center is where we communicate. So it's a couple that has difficulty in being able to articulate with each other. So what usually happens in their lives is that every time they get invited to a dinner party, the moment they sit down with all their friends, their friends hook up their throats, and they start screaming at each other and have their fights in public. So whenever I get couples like that and I tell them that, of course, they're very embarrassed and they say, yes, that's true. And then when I tell them to do, look, you know, if you're having problems with each other, go into a cafe, a restaurant, whatever you like, sit down with each other with that aura all around you. You get the activation of that throat. You can have your, your whole business out and you can communicate with each other. Take advantage of the mechanics. Coming back to what people um, are, are influenced by. So you say they're influenced by the people around them, but you also say they're influenced by what the stars and the planets, and what you say, the neutrino fields that mm. really surround us all the time. Well, the most, the most important aspect of the human design system is that it's rooted in physics and good physics, and it was way ahead of its time when the voice, in my experience, told me about neutrinos bearing mass. There was no such thing as that time. There was uh, mild speculation about such things, but there was no proof of that. It still has yet to dawn on the world community what that significantly means. I know of scientists in the United States particularly who are already theorizing about the nature of the neutrino stream and that it may be in fact the consciousness stream everybody's sort of looking for. I've been telling people that for nine years. Uh, the, the nature of the neutrino field, the fact that we're being penetrated by all of this material, that it is material. <clears throat> Obviously we're all in a program. The in order to take you through design, I have to take you through some basic information first. The first thing is the, the physics. According to the biologists, the physicists sometimes about uh, 12 billion to 15 billion years ago, an event took place that they call the Big Bang. And at the moment that this event took place, uh, two families of objects were created, a yin family and a yang family. And this yin family is made up of what the physicists call quarks. Um, and they came together in two groups of two, and they formed the nucleus of what we call an atom. And on the other side, the energy side, was this family called the leptons. And there were six of these, three kinds that are electrons and three kinds that are neutrinos. Most people know the electron. The electron came together with the neutron and the proton, and it formed the atom. And everything that you can imagine, the birds and the bees and the trees and you and me were all atomic in nature. And there's a joke in all. That is the, uh, the mass of the universe, 10% of everything you can imagine, all the stars, all the galaxies. It's only 10% of what the mass of the totality is. 90% of the material of the universe, they call it dark material, up until very recently was something that they had no information about. All of us are within the same field of information. That's very important for us as a global community. When you say here, field of information, you mean field of potential information? No. 
no, 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 no. A field of information, specifically information. The, the, what did Joni Mitchell sing at Woodstock? We are stardust. You know, the, every single one of the stars in the sky and the sun is the closest one to us. The sun and is giving us 70% of our neutrino in, information. In a very holographic view of the universe, you say in each of us and in each neutrino, the whole information of the whole universe w is contained. In 1987, there was a, a supernova, uh, the first one that was visual with the naked eye in, in, in modern recorded history. It was seen first in Chile. It was called 1987A. And when this star died, what a nova is, uh, because of the nature of the explosion, it released a stream of neutrino information. Normally, we receive three trillion neutrinos a second over a square centimeter of space. And in the 17 minutes that followed the death of this star, we received nine trillion neutrinos a second. From a mystical point of view, if you like, or just simply from a visionary point of view, to recognize that this old star, when it died, it gave all of us its last bits of information. All of us, all of us. It's a wonderful thing. The most beautiful thing for me in physics is the recognition that the neutrino stream that penetrates through me not only changes me, but I change it, just as you do, just as we all do. And that's a very beautiful idea, because remember, that neutrino stream, as it moves through me and is changed by me, goes back out into the universe in every direction, at near the speed of light. I've been in the world now 47 years, and in my 47 years, I've touched stars in a diameter, in a huge sphere around our planet, in all kinds of directions, for over 40 light years in distance. I've touched thousands of stars in the sky with the nature of what it is to be me. All of us do that. It's is a magnificent a deep, thing. Is there a, a deep underlying message that says all are one or I am part and influencing the everything around me? What I, what I teach, what I was taught, what I was told in my experience is that the whole universe is, a, is an evolving entity, a single entity. It is not born yet. We are still on the inside. I give you something publicly that is way ahead of its time, way ahead of its time. Nine years ago, in my experience with the voice, I was told that there are stars in the universe that are older than the universe. And I thought, now that's cute. We've always been on the inside, eh? Since the beginning. We have never been on the outside. Everything is on the inside. And there are things that were here on the inside before all of this started. Inside, you mean inside our brain? No, no. The universe is inside of something. And inside of that, what is a cosmic womb, the Hopi Indians know that there's an umbilical cord in space that goes to the mother. We are part of an evolving entity that is not born yet, like a fetus. And what I was told is that the solar cell that we live in, the sun and the planets around us, that we are the core of the evolving consciousness of this entity, not its personality, its form consciousness. We are the great measurers of things. We have to live in these vehicles and fight gravity and measure everything, how big it is, how long it is, you know, like we're trying to figure out the nature of the universe now. And one of the things that scientists are discovering now is that there are stars in the universe that are older than the universe and it's making them very uncomfortable because it doesn't fit into their theories and they don't know what to do. And they're going to discover, just as I was eight years ahead of them, that neutrinos have mass, they're also going to discover that, yes, indeed, there are stars in the universe that are older than the universe. And please understand what that will mean. That will change the cosmology of the way in which we look at the universe. We are inside. We are inside evolving. We do not know the outside. Think of the child inside of the womb of its mother. It does not know what made it. I do not know the name of God. It does not know who made it. It does not know what world it belongs to. We do not know. We do not know what we are. Humanity is deeply, deeply ignorant. Uh, what worked for me was that I, if I had to go out into the world and tell people that uh, a voice, a voice talked to me and here's my authority, my authority comes from the voice, I would never, ever, 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 ever do that. Human design system is logical. And from the beginning, I've told every audience I've ever talked to, don't believe me, don't trust me, see it for yourself. This is self-knowledge. It will, it has nothing to do nothing in the end to do with the nature of whether I'm good at it or not good at it or the right person or the wrong person or a holy man or whatever. The most important thing is that a human being gets to see what they can rely on and where they're conditioned. This is the most important thing in life. This is the basic duality of a human being. What you can rely on, you've never relied on in your life. What you can't trust, you've been trying to trust all your life. 
This is the joke. So what we do with people is we say to them, now look, please understand, what you've been trusting has never been you. What you've been ignoring has always been you. Try to trust what's really you and see what happens.